Hey everyone, this is Ayushi from Edureka. Topic for today's session is SSIS Tutorial. Now SSIS stands for SQL Server Integration Services, which is a service from Microsoft. So without wasting any more time, let's move ahead and look at the agenda for today. So we'll start off the session by first discussing what is data integration and why do we need it. Now data integration is achieved using various tools. So my next topic would be why SSIS came into the picture and why it is preferred over the other data integration tools. Next we'll be looking deep into what is SSIS and what are the different components of SSIS. So we'll be learning about ETL, data warehousing, followed by a quick installation of Visual Studio and data tools needed for the same. Moving towards the later half of the session, we'll be discussing what is the SSIS package and how you can create a package in Visual Studio. Finally, we'll be doing a demonstration wherein we'll be taking a real life example and integrate data using SSIS. So I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Can you drop me a quick confirmation so that I can proceed? Okay, Anna says a yes. So does Sam. Maybe give me a thumbs up. Alright, so I got confirmations from many of you. So let's begin the session. So my first topic is why do we need data integration? So let me take an example here as to understand the need of data integration. So if you look at the image here, suppose I'm in a company where I have different departments. Now every department has some data, right? So based on the company requirements, they choose a database. So for example, my accounting team chooses SAP to store all the analytical data. Or you can say my sales team uses Salesforce CRM as to manage all the customer details. Similarly, different team uses different database. My marketing team is using Oracle. Manufacturing is using DB2 and many more. So all this depends on the requirements of your company. Now I have different databases where my different type of data is stored. But let's say my manager asked me to analyze all the departments and tell me who brings the best revenue out of all the teams. So what would I do now? Any idea guys if you could suggest me with something or you could help me with this current problem? Okay so Sam tells me you can connect the databases. Um, yes Sam you can connect the databases. This is absolutely right but let me tell you to connect the databases it's not free. You need a connection object or adapter for it. Moreover, dealing with these connected databases will create more complexities for you. Because if you have large data, say you have 100 databases and to connect all of them, it will consume a lot of time. So I hope you understand why I'm not saying to connect the databases. Okay, but now what would the solution then? Here a simple solution would be data integration. Now by data integration, what I mean is you can integrate all your data present in different databases and combine them at the same platform. So let's understand more about it and get an answer to what is data integration. So I've seen the need of data integration. Now let's understand data integration and what exactly it means. So data integration is a process you follow to get data from multiple sources. Your data can be in any form. It can be heterogeneous or it can be homogeneous. Now by these terms I mean data can be in structured form, it can be semi-structured form, or it can be unstructured. So these are dissimilar data. But if these dissimilar data combines together into meaningful and valuable information, wouldn't that be great? So this exactly is data integration. Now data integration was coined recently, but before that also people uses data integration. But people didn't realize the potential of data integration. So they used different methods to achieve it. So here I have listed few ways from which you can achieve data integration, such as data modeling, where you first create a model and then perform operations on it. Then there is data profiling where you take a sample data and check if there is some inconsistencies, errors or some variations to it. Similarly, there are different methods from which you can achieve data integration. Now, it is not necessary to achieve data integration using a single process. There may be a collection of different processes. Therefore, there is no limitation as to how you achieve data integration. Now, let's see some advantages of data integration. So, the first advantage is it reduces complexity. Now by saying this, I mean it is easy to deliver data to any system. So data integration is all about managing complexity, streamlining these connections and making it easy to deliver data to any system. Now the second advantage is data integrity. Now integrity has a major role in data integration. So data integrity basically deals with cleansing and validating your data. So all of us need that data to be high quality and robust, right? So data integrity ensures that your data is free of errors, inconsistencies or any duplication. 
Third, we have data collaboration. Now with accessibility comes easier collaboration. Now what I mean by accessibility, I mean data is easily transformed and people will be more likely to integrate their data into the project, share their results and keep it up to the date. So here the data collaboration factor lies. Last but not the least, smarter business decision. Now you can make smarter decisions as your integrated data also refers to transparent processes within your company. So here you are given the opportunity to better understand the information. Hence it is much easier and more informative. So based on the information collected, you can actually make smarter decisions. So I hope now you guys are clear with the need, what it is and different advantages of data integration. So kindly reply me in the chat window so that I know you guys are with me. Also, if you have any query or any problem you face, you are free to ping me anytime. If not now, you can always contact our support team which is 24-7 available or directly you can mail it to me. All the details will be there in your LMS. Alright, I am getting confirmations. That's great. Okay, so now let's move ahead. So there are various data integration tools available in the market such as Abinitio, Microsoft SQL Server, IBM InfoSphere, Oracle and many more. Now let's just focus on Microsoft SQL Server Integration Services that is SSIS. So before going to what exactly is SSIS, first let's understand the why part. So why SSIS? So now my first point is data can be loaded in parallel to many varied destinations. So as we've already learned that it collects data from multiple sources. Now SSIS is responsible for connecting to each data source, extracting the data and merging it into a single data set. So this is how SSIS plays an important role. Next it removes the need of hardcore programmers. This is because SSIS includes the capability to load large amount of data directly from the flat file or excel file in SQL Server. Next we have tight integration with all the products of Microsoft. Also the best part about SSIS is it is cheaper than most of the other tools. If we compare it with respect to base product, their manageability, business intelligence, availability and multi-core. So these are few of the points that I've listed as to why you prefer SSIS over other data integration tools. Now let's understand what exactly is SSIS. So as we all know SSIS is a service of Microsoft that basically performs data integration or you can say merging of data from different data sources which can be from flat file, it can be from Excel, it can be from SAP, Oracle or anything. So it is basically used to perform a broad range of data integration as well as data transformation tasks. So in a whole you can say it basically performs data migration. So SSIS is a platform for data integration and workflow applications. So by data integration we already know that data is retrieved and combined in a structure which has a unified view. Next we have workflow. Now a workflow can do several things. Sometimes you just need some steps or path in the package execution which is either based on time period or maybe a parameter that is passed or queried from the database. Now after identifying it you can choose any path you want to take. So this is how SSIS works out. Next we have already discussed that SSIS is a platform for data integration and workflow applications. So these two things are carried out using an SSIS package. So we'll be talking about SSIS package in further more slides wherein I'll be teaching you how you can create an SSIS package in your Visual Studio. So SSIS consists of three major components. The first is operational data followed by an ETL process and then the data warehouse. So let's understand each one of them in detail now. So the first component is operational data. Now what exactly it is? So an operational data or you can say an ODS which stands for operational data store which is a database that is used to integrate data from multiple sources. Also one key point of operational data is unlike a master data store where the data is not passed back to operational systems. It may be passed for further operations and the data warehouse for reporting but it is not passed back to the operational system. So about data warehouse we'll be starting in just few more slides. Next there is ETL process which is very important. So ETL is a process to extract, transform and load the data. So ETL is a process responsible for pulling data out of the source which can be of any format. It can be of XML, flat file and placing the whole into a data warehouse. Also an ETL process ensures that the data stored in the warehouse is relevant, it is useful to the business users 
it is accurate and it is high quality. Also, it is easy to access so that the warehouse is used efficiently and effectively by the business users. So ETL helps an organization to make meaningful data-driven decisions by interpreting and transforming large amount of structured and unstructured data. Even though ETL is a three-word concept, but it is actually divided into four phases. So the first phase is capture. It is also known as an extract phase. So in this phase, it basically picks the source data or metadata, which can be present in any format. So the next process is scrub. So scrub basically identify errors in your original data. For checking these errors and inconsistencies, it uses some artificial intelligence techniques to verify the quality of the data. So it verifies quality of the data and it basically ensures that the quality of the data is met or not. Third, we have transformation. So transformation is another process where your source data is converted to the required format you want. So transformation is modeling or changing your data to meet the requirements. It can be with respect to number of rows and column processing. So if you want to increase the number of rows or columns, you can transform it accordingly. Next final stage is load and index. So in this stage, it loads the data and validates the number of rows that is processed meets the required number of rows. Once your loading is done, indexing helps you track the number of rows or the amount of data you are loading into the warehouse. So it basically checks the data through indexing and identify the data is in correct format or not. So let us move on to another major concept that is a data warehouse. So a data warehouse is a single, complete and consistent store of data which is formulated by combining the data from various sources. And when we are combining the data from different sources, we are not simply saying just go and take data from different sources and combine them together. There has to be a purpose for it. So we as an analyst or consultant go ahead and see whether this particular database is suitable to answer any BI question or not. So you must be wondering that we are just going round and round talking about very similar things. But these terms are extremely important for you. So once you understand what a data warehouse is, what a BI system is, all this will become secondary and it will naturally come to you. So data warehouse is a technique where we pull the data or assemble the data from various sources and combine them in order to answer the question which business users want. So stop me if you have any doubts in these terms or anything related to data warehouse. Alright, so Bibek here asked me a question, is data warehouse different from a database? Well, the answer to your question is yes, no, both. No, because a data warehouse is also a database if you compare the physical representation of the database. Same representation is of data warehouse also. Now, yes, because data warehouse is a structure where analytics related queries can be fired and you can get faster query responses if you compare it with a database. So I hope you got an answer, Vivek. Okay, so he's saying he's clear. All right, so now let's just quickly go ahead and understand the architecture of data warehouse. So if you look at the diagram, it is read from left to right. On the left hand side, you have your operational data. Now operational data, as we have discussed before, it means all the transactional data that you make in a transactional system. Let's say sales system or let's say banking system where you can transfer money from one place to another place. So those are your operational systems where you're actually making transactions. So that particular data is kept into your operational system. Now this data is picked up and I have already talked about ETL, right? which basically is a process that helps you pick the data from the operational systems. So this arrow goes to the bigger blue box that you can see, saying that extraction, transform and load happens. And then it pushes the data into data warehouse. From data warehouse, data goes into a cube sort of structure. So cube is categorized as OLAP structure. So OLAP here refers to online analytical processing. This comes under SSAS where all your data analysis is done. Don't worry guys, we'll be talking about SSAS in the next session. Now once you have this OLAP structure, you just have to build in your reports on it and export it to business users and then they can go ahead and make the analysis. So this is a typical data warehouse architecture. So any doubts still here guys? Okay, so Anna is clear. Sam is saying all good. All right then. Next comes our installation part. Now before we start a project, we need to have all the necessary tools with us. Now let's have a look at different tools required to perform SSIS. First, we will install SQL Server. So as you can see in the slide, I have a screenshot attached where I have highlighted the link and download tab where you can go directly and download it. So let me show you how it is done. So I'll go to my Google and just type in SQL Server. 
So here the first link comes up of Microsoft. So just click on it. So this is the official website of Microsoft. So here as you can see there is a download tab. So just click on it. And then you will land to different versions available for SQL Server. The first is free trial evaluation. Second is developer edition. And third is express edition. So the free trial evaluation gives a free trial only for 180 days. Next is your developer edition. Now this edition deals with all your development and test database in a non-production environment. Thirdly, it's your express edition. It also deals with your development and production, but it is for small server applications. So you can download any one of them based on your requirements. So I have downloaded this developer edition. For downloading it, you just have to click on download now. Once it gets downloaded, it's a very easy process to install. You just have to click on next, next, next and your installation will be done. So in case you have any problem in the download or installation part, let me know. I'll be happy to assist you with the same. Next, there is data tools. So why do we need data tools? So as you can see in this slide, it follows the same procedure. So here you should go to this link and then download this SQL Server data tools 17.1. So let me show you how you can do this. So to download data tools, you just have to type in SQL Server So the first link that comes up is of Microsoft. So just go and click on it. So here as you can see you can download this SQL Server data tool 17.1. You just have to click on it and again the installation process will be the same. So here this is the setup. You can go on and install it. Now you must be wondering why I have downloaded two different tools for it. So SQL Server 2014 is the actual server RDBMS. So whenever you install it, you can go and create the database or create table into it. Next, we have downloaded the data tools which is used to create the MSPA project. So the whole process of extraction, transformation, loading, reporting will be done using these data tools. So now let us understand what is SSIS package and how you can create SSIS package using these tools. So a package is a fundamental block where you go ahead and code in the SSIS. Now code here not refers to any programming language. It's the development you do. So the development is done inside a package. So SSIS is essentially for ETL and the package will go ahead and do the ETL process. Now a package will have some connections. Now these connections will help you connect to the various data sources. It will have control flow elements and data flow elements as well. So these two components combine together to form a package. Now here your control flow elements handles your workflow. Now workflow is you are doing something in steps like step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4 in sequence or step 1 and 2 in parallel. So the sequence is done through control flow and then you have a place where you do the transformation. So these transformations are handled by data flow elements. So let us move to a demo part where we will have a look at student information system. So in this I will perform ETL that is extraction, transformation and loading using SSIS package. So here I am extracting the data from a CSV file. Now remember I am taking my file input as CSV which is a comma separated file but you can take it from any other source as well. After that I will perform some transformations to it and then load it to database. So all these set of operations are performed inside a SSIS package. Now to import your data from a CSV file first you have to create a CSV file. So let us go to notepad and create a comma separated file. I will go to my notepad plus plus. So my demo is all about student information system. So the first thing I should keep in mind that is my student ID. Second I can have student name. Then marks. And gender. Now I can feed in some dummy values to it. So for example student ID can be 1. Student name can be say Ayushi. Marks let's say 80. Gender is female. Similarly I can go on and feed in more details. So I already have some. So I will just copy paste it. So here if you see I have some 500 rows data. Now let's see how you can import this data into a database. So first of all I will save this. Let's say in my desktop. My name student. Student information. This is done.
So let me open my SQL Server so you can find in all programs Micro SQL Server 2014 and here it is. So first of all I'll create a new project. So here as you can see there are two methods to achieve this. So the first is a scratch template where you can perform your EPL and the second is using a wizard. So we'll go to integration services project. So I'll change the name to student information. Student information SSIS. So this is the location. If you want to change it you can. Then I click on OK. So my project is getting loaded. So here it suggests some basic samples where you can get an introduction. For now it's not needed so I'll just close it. So as you can see here we have five different tabs here. One is control flow, then data flow, parameters, event handlers and package explorer. So we have already talked about control flow and data flow. Now these are something that are used inside the SSIS package. Now remaining I'll talk about them later. And if you see at the right hand side it shows your project name which has a project.params. Then we have your connection manager. Then I have package which has an extension of DTSX which stands for data transformation services. Then we have miscellaneous. So to import the data first I have to create a database wherein I can create some tables. So let me go to the windows panel all programs and open SQL Server Management Studio. So let me just open it. So here as you can see this is my admin PC that is the server name. Then I have databases. Now in databases you have to create a new database. Let's say I have student warehouse. And I just click on OK. So if you go on databases my student warehouse is created. Now if you see here I have tables column. So inside a table I create a new table. Now so here is my CSV file. Now I want this whole data to be imported. So here I'll write the column name. The first is your student ID and then I'll have data type let's say nvcar50. Second I was having student name. Select the data type and similarly for others. Now marks can be my real value. And gender would be again nvcar. So we'll just save this table and we'll give a nice name to it. Let's say student table. Now here I will go to my student ID and create this as primary key. Now I hope you guys are aware with the primary key concept. So once my table is created, now let me go back to my Visual Studio. I've already discussed about control flow and data flow. Now here in my SSIS toolbox, here is my data flow task. So I'll just drag and drop this data flow task and put a nice name to it. So let's say load CSV file. So once this is done, when I double click on this component, it will automatically go to data flow. So again, I'll show you. If you can see, I'm here in control flow tab where I've dragged and drop this data flow element. And when you double click on this, it automatically goes to data flow. So what does that mean? So here it means that control flow is a container for data flow. So now my control flow invokes your data flow element. By my data flow, I have to extract my CSV file. So I have common here are the transformations where I can perform transformations. Then I have other sources where I have to load the data. So I'll go to other sources and have a flat file source. So here I have just drag and drop this flat file source. Now here as you can see there is a red cross over here. So what does this mean? This means that your component is not configured. So let me go and edit this. So every component need to be connected to the actual data. So we need a connection manager over here. So let me just first create a connection manager. 
So I'll click on new. So here let me put some name. Say SSIS connection. Or you can say SSIS flat file connection. Then I can have some description to it. I'll just copy paste the connection manager name only. And then I have to import my flat file. So again my flat file was in a notepad. So here I have to browse the location. It was saved at my desktop. So it must be here. So student information. So here everything else is already filled. You don't have to change anything. Next you have columns. So here it is a quick preview of my table. Alright this is fine. Then I have a preview. Again this also looks fine. So I click on OK. And again OK. Now if you notice that my red cross has gone. So this element is now configured. Now if you closely see this element. It has two arrows. The one in blue and the one in red. So the blue arrow defines the actual data that will come out from this flat file source. And the red arrow denotes the errors. Now I have to perform some transformations on it. But before that, let me load it to a database. So we have an option here, other destinations. So I'll click on it. And I have ADO net destination. So I'll just drag and drop it again. Now why I've chosen this destination? This is because my end user is a SQL server. So now I have my flat source and I have my destination. So as I have already told you that this blue sign denotes the data. Now I have to connect my flat file source to my destination. So I have connected this. Now again if you notice there is again that red cross coming. So I will again go and edit it. So here also it asks for a connection manager but this time it is not the same because the end user is SQL. So I will go to new. Then I will create a new. Now it asks for server name. So I will go to my management studio and see what is the name of my server. So I'll open file connection object explorer and see the server name that is admin PC. So I'll just copy from here and paste it over here. Next I have to choose a database. So here my database is student warehouse. I'll just click on it and I'll check the connection. Now my test connection succeeded. I'll click on OK. Again OK. OK. Then I have to insert a table. Now if I open the drop down list, my table name is here. So I click on it. So my table is selected. Then I'll go to mappings. Now mapping, what will it do? It will just map my student ID to student ID. It's basically, it's mapping the source file to the table that we have just created. So here we have to map all of them. So student name is student name. Marks will be connected to marks. Then gender will be connected to gender. So as you can see, I have created the connections. Now let's click on OK. So my red cross has gone. Now this means that my data is successfully loaded. So let us just run this program. It says green tick. That is nice. And again it's nice. Now you must have noticed that my input from flat file source has been loaded to my destination part which has a large data. That is my 500 rows are imported from flat file source to a destination part. So here we are done with the extraction and loading part. So what is left now? Now let us see how transformation is done to it. So let me go back to my management studio. Here I have my table. So if you see here all my student names are in lower case. So let's transform these student names to upper case. For this first of all I have to delete this table. So I will write delete and I will execute this query. So my table is deleted. Now why we have deleted this table? Because in my table I have set my primary key as student ID. So to avoid all the primary key violations I have just deleted the table. Now if we come back here. First of all I delete the connection. So here if you see I have my other sources which is extraction where I have taken the flat file source. Next I have other destination where I have loaded the data. And here comes the transformation part. Also you can see this common section where it has again transformation rules. So I'll take a derived column here. So here my derived column is nothing but it will create an extra column in the existing column data. So here first of all I have to make a connection which says it makes a connection. Now let's say it goes to 
Now here I have to create an extra column. Let's say a capital column. So for this I have this column. Let's click on this. So I already have these four columns over here. Student ID, student name, marks and gender. So I have to transform my student name. So I'll drag and drop to the expression. Now here I am getting two options. Either add as a new column or replace. So I'll add a new column. Let me give a nice name to it. Say upper student name. Now if you see I have different functions available over here. So it has mathematical functions, string functions, date, null functions and many more. So I'll directly go to the string functions and see if there is any method for uppercase. So here you find an upper function. So let me just drag and drop to here. And inside this I have to transform my character expression. So I'll repeat it here. First of all I have to drag and drop my upper function. Next I have to transform my student name. So I'll just drag and drop to the character expression. And hence it is done. So I click on OK. Then I'll go back to my destination. Then again I'll go to edit. So remember we have done some mappings over here. So again my student name has been mapped to student name. So I have to remove this and I have to insert an upper student name. So now my upper student name is mapping to my student name. Now click on OK and just run it. So as you can see my flat file has also got a tick and destination is also done. So my extraction, transformation and loading has been done successfully. So let us go back in my management studio and let's see what here choose. Select star from this and I'll just execute this. So if you notice here my student name is in capital case. So there is it. So my extraction, transformation and loading has been done. So I hope you guys are clear with all the three processes that I've just discussed. The ETL process. So if you are facing any problem in any of the concepts that I've talked about in the session, you can just write it down in your chat box or probably connect with me in my next session. So any question guys? Alright, so I don't see any questions here. Alright, so thank you so much guys. Also this video will be uploaded to your LMS and if you have any doubt, any query, you can always reach out to our support team which is 24-7 available. So by this, I hope you guys had a better understanding of SSIS. Well, thank you everyone. Have a great day. Goodbye. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.